Hello friends. Considering the proliferation of photovoltaic installations, both of medium and high power, as well as for use in homes, I have thought it should be interesting to show you how useful thermography can be for the commissioning and maintenance of these installations, so in this video I will show you examples of problems that we can detect with infrared cameras, as well as some practical advices. My name is Robert, and I hope this video is of interest to you, in that case don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. For those who do not know about thermography, we can start by indicating that it is a technology that allows us to visualize temperature patterns using special cameras, called infrared cameras, which will capture the infrared radiation that all bodies emit, and using some formulas they are going to convert this measurement of infrared radiation into measurements of the surface temperature of the objects that we see. Those temperatures are going to be represented in the form of colored images. To do this, infrared cameras allow us to use different color palettes, which associate a specific color with each temperature, in this way we can say that an infrared camera takes photographs, or videos, of the temperatures of objects. We call these temperature photographs as thermographs. Each image point on the camera display represents a temperature of the surface of the object. As we can see, an infrared camera and a normal digital camera are very similar, although logically they differ in the type of sensor that each one has. The sensor of thermal imaging cameras is designed to capture infrared radiation, between 7.5 and 14 microns in wavelength, while normal digital cameras, their sensor is sensitive to visible light that has a different wavelength. Otherwise, they are quite similar, infrared cameras also have lenses, a display, a battery, a memory, etc. Now that we know what a thermographic camera is, we can understand how useful it can be for the maintenance in general, and especially for photovoltaic installations, since temperature is undoubtedly one of the variables that we measure more frequently, because it affects so much to the operation of the facilities as well as to their safety. In this way, thermography is a fundamental tool in the laboratories of photovoltaic panel factories, since they allow to ensure the quality and correct operation of the manufactured panels. Likewise, we are going to see that thermography is a fundamental tool for the commissioning and maintenance of photovoltaic installations, as it can detect problems associated with the quality of photovoltaic panels in the field, which facilitates the application of guarantees. And since photovoltaic installations are electrical installations themselves, we can apply the use of infrared cameras for their maintenance, detecting typical problems of electrical installations. In this sense, we can mention the standard IEC 62446-3, which is aimed at the use of thermography for the inspection of photovoltaic modules outdoors. The objective is to develop the preventive maintenance for fire protection, system availability for energy production and quality inspection of photovoltaic modules. This standard will represent a guide in relation to the use of thermal imaging cameras, the environmental conditions to be considered during inspections, inspection procedures, the creation of reports, the typical anomalies that we may face, etc. As I have already mentioned, thanks to the thermography we will be able to detect problems in the photovoltaic panels, we will be able to verify from a thermal point of view the electrical wiring and its connections, the state of the diode boxes, motors, transformers and the power electronics of inverters, and if we consider facilities that incorporate batteries, we can also analyze their situation. Photovoltaic panels are basically cells of semiconductor material joined together by conductors. These cells can be defective during manufacturing or be damaged during shipping and installation, causing them to not perform as expected. Likewise, each cell must be connected to the next in series forming a chain, in order to deliver the proper output voltage. This involves conductors and welds within the panel, which can be defective. Finally, the panel offers connections to the outside with diode protections. All these elements, in most cases, when they present a problem, they are going to show an increase in temperature, which makes their detection with an infrared camera very simple. As we see in the image on the left, a damaged cell is going to be overheated due to reverse polarization. Thanks to the temperature measurements, we can determine the temperature difference between the damaged cell and the average temperature of the panel, which will facilitate the decision-making regarding the replacement of that panel. Since the cells within a panel are connected in series, it is possible that the failure of one of them will significantly affect the performance of that panel. Additionally, the panels are also connected in series and parallel to each other, in that way, 
a problem in one panel can affect the entire installation. As we can see in these graphs, when a cell does not generate energy, either because it has a problem or because the sun does not shine on it, and it is in shade, they are electrically polarized inversely, which means that instead of generating energy, it becomes a load, that is, it consumes energy and it generates heat, which causes its temperature to rise considerably. This effect makes it very easy to detect a defective cell with a thermal imager. This aspect and others related to the connection of the panels, can cause voltage differences to occur between the panels, which will affect the protection diodes that they incorporate, making these diodes have to be subjected to voltages that cause an excessive heating. The more damaged cells in the panel, the more power will be dissipated into the protection diodes and the more they will heat up. Therefore, another typical element to inspect is precisely these junction boxes and protection diodes. Whenever the installation allows us, we can inspect the photovoltaic panels both from the front and from the rear, in order to better look at the connections and diode boxes. In this case we see that it is also possible to capture a thermographic image together with a visual image, for easier identification of the panel. Despite the fact that at the beginning I indicated that thermography only allows us to get images of temperatures of the surface of the objects, it is easy to understand that if we see a hot spot in a junction box, the problem may be associated with the elements found inside. For example, a bad connection or protection diodes with problems due to faulty cells, as we see in the image. Given the high sensitivity of thermal imaging cameras, despite the fact that the temperature in this particular diode box is not very high, it is possible to detect abnormal heating associated with incipient problems that over time could lead to a failure of the installation. Here we can see another example where the camera indicates a temperature of about 72 degrees Celsius in one of the cells, compared to an average temperature of about 24 degrees for the rest of the panel. As we can see, it is an already important temperature difference, close to 50 degrees Celsius. In turn, excessive heating of one cell can lead to deterioration of other nearby cells over time, which causes the damage to spread throughout the panel. The problems that we can find in the panels can be diverse, previously we have seen defective cells in a very defined way, although we can also find panels that randomly present different hot spots, depending on the type of technology used to manufacture the panel. What is clear, is that with the infrared camera we will be able to detect these temperature variations, an aspect that is critical during the commissioning of the photovoltaic installation, since at that time it will be much easier and cheaper to replace any panel that already presents problems and it will be also much easier to ask for guarantees from the manufacturer on defective panels. As we have already seen, we can inspect the panels both from the front and from the back as long as the type of installation allows it. Manufacturers of photovoltaic panels can guarantee the panels up to a certain temperature, for example 85 degrees Celsius, so it is important to detect as soon as possible any problem that may be related to an increase in the operating temperature of the panel. In these graphs we can see the current and voltage curves for various cell temperature values. In short, what they tell us is that temperature is an important factor for the performance of the photovoltaic panel. Thus, for example, Crystalline silicon cells can lose up to half a percent of efficiency for each degree of increase in their temperature, and those of amorphous silicon between 0.15% and 0.25% for each degree of increase of its temperature. Radiometric cameras save the temperature information of each pixel, so either on the camera screen, or better on the computer with the software provided with the camera, we can analyze the temperatures with point or zone markers, for example we can draw a trapezoidal area framing the entire panel to obtain the maximum, minimum and average temperature of the panel, which will be very useful to determine temperature differences, since sometimes the absolute temperatures may not always be correct due to errors in the configuration of the emissivity on the camera. With these values of maximum and average temperatures we could make reports about the possible efficiency of the panel. For example, in the image on the left we have that the minimum temperature is 28.5 degrees Celsius, the average temperature is 32.5 degrees and the maximum is 39.8 degrees. In other words, if we consider a temperature variation of 4 degrees between cells, multiplying by an efficiency loss of 0.5% for each degree, then some cells will have an efficiency loss of 2%, and for hotter cells the loss efficiency can reach 5%. Here we see more examples of problems detected in photovoltaic panels. Sometimes it is not even necessary to install the panel, 
simply by short-circuiting its output we can detect cells with problems. Of course, it is important to carry out the inspections correctly and avoid errors such as the one we see in the image, where the shadow of people is perceived on the panel itself, which means that the images and measurements obtained are not as professional as they should be. So far, we have seen many examples of problems in cells, but we can also detect problems associated with the connection of cells within the panel. As we already know, by Joule's law, joints, connections or welds with too much resistance lead to a higher generation of heat, which makes them easily detectable with a thermal imager. But in a photovoltaic installation there are not only panels, but we can also find other electrical or even mechanical elements that we can inspect at a thermographic level. Motors in industry are typical elements in any thermographic inspection program. However, in a photovoltaic installation, the motors associated with the following systems, may be more difficult to inspect since they do not work as intensively. As in any other electrical installation, we can inspect the wiring connections or protections and detect hot spots associated, for example, to poor tightening, or even overload, and harmonic problems in the cables. If we are already talking about high power installations, we can also find power transformers and inverters. Again, we can use thermography in this type of element since they will allow us to detect temperatures associated with bad connections, unbalances, ventilation problems, etc. In installations with batteries, we can also use the thermal imaging camera to see if there are problems associated with the connections, or even the heating of the batteries during the process of charging and discharging them. In these cases, we can compare the temperatures of the batteries with each other, so that simply by comparison, we can detect problems. In the event that we can inspect both the front and rear of the panel, it will be interesting to compare the temperature value measured in the same cell and compare these values to determine emissivity adjustment problems, since the front side may present a different emissivity than the back side, this way we can better document the problem in the report. The emissivity can change depending on the type of surface on which we are measuring, but it can also depend on the angle that the panel makes with the camera, which will affect the value of the measured temperature. It is recommended not to form two oblique angles to the panel, for example, we should avoid angles less than 30 degrees. Here we can see this graph provided by the standard IEC 62446-3, which shows the dependence of the emissivity of the glass as a function of the angle of view that the thermal imager supports with the panel. And as we have already commented previously, we must also avoid creating shadows on the panel, or appearing in the thermographed image due to reflections, that is, angles of 90 degrees should also be avoided, which cause our image to be reflected on the panel and go back to the camera. Just as we talk about avoiding our own shadow, we must take into account when analyzing thermographs, the possibility of shadows created by elements of the environment, such as trees, power lines or nearby structures. As we are going to work outdoors, we must also take into account the presence of the wind, since in this case, Due to the effect of convection, the measured temperatures can be considerably reduced, which can mask hot spots in the installation and then we can fail to detect some problems. For this reason, it is advisable to measure the wind speed with a small anemometer to properly document our report. The recommendation is to avoid conducting inspections with wind speeds greater than 10 miles per hour. In these cases, it will be advisable to reduce the temperature range of the color palette in order to improve the contrast and highlight smaller temperature differences. In the standard IEC 62446-3, you can find more information in relation to these recommendations. This standard also tells us about visual inspections. Undoubtedly, the first inspection to be carried out in any installation is visual, not only to detect problems but also for safety issues. In this way we can detect bird droppings, dirt from rain, burn stains on modules, dust, breaks, etc., aspects that we must document through photos. In this sense, all Fluke thermal imaging cameras include not only an infrared camera but also a visual camera, and thanks to Fluke's IR fusion technology, when a thermal image is captured, a perfectly aligned visual image is also automatically captured. The infrared image can be made more or less transparent, so that the information in the visual image can also be seen. These types of images are very useful and attractive when preparing reports. The realization of a report is really important, since it not only represents the proof of the work of the thermographer, but through it the appropriate maintenance actions must be transmitted. 
For this reason, it is essential to have a powerful software for both the computer and the mobile phone itself so that professional reports can be made easily and quickly, even in the installation itself. In this sense, Fluke offers the free software SmartView for PC, and Fluke Connect for both the phone and the PC. To finish this video, I simply wanted to show you that in addition to the use of thermal imaging cameras, for photovoltaic installations it will be very useful to have a solar irradiance meter such as Fluke, IRR1 Sol, which in addition to measuring watts per square meter, it also measures the temperature of the panel and its inclination. And of course, as in any other electrical installation, it is surely necessary to have other measuring instruments such as clamp meters, power quality and energy analyzers, insulation meters, telerometers, etc. And so, we have reached the end of this presentation that I hope you have found interesting. If that is the case, don't forget to drop a like, so that I know that you liked it. In a future video I will show precisely the use of the solar irradiance meter Fluke IRR1 Sol, so if you don't want to miss it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and activate the notification bell. See you in a next video. Bye.